Hey guys, Cody with Double C Custom Leather here. Um, I'm going to do another video for you guys today. Uh, we are going to do a pancake style outside the waistband. It's going to be a right handed holster. <clears throat> it's going to be for a PMR 30. Now, I have a whole build along uh, holster for this particular gun um, video, so you guys check that out. Um, but this one is specifically going to be on how to do an inlay. Um, whether it be an inlay with some artwork, an inlay with some exotic skin. Um, I get a lot of questions about how to do the inlays. Um, this particular one's going to be with some alligators. So um, if you follow along, you'll be able to put together the skills <clears throat> to do the, the inlay portion of it. I'm not going to do the entire build along holster. I feel like the video would get way too long. So um, we may do that at a later date, but this one is just going to be pertaining to the inlay. All right, so let's get this camera turned around and uh, we'll get started on it. All right, guys, so <clears throat> we've got our patterns uh, that we've got here. Um, this is my pattern for a PMR holster. Um, you'll see I, this is my front pancake and this, when I flip it over, would be the back. Um, I've already went, went ahead and took the liberty of tracing that. I don't think anybody needs a instruction on how to trace it on the leather. Um, also, if you'll notice here, there's some very faint lines. I don't know if the camera will show up, but very faint lines only on the front portion, not on the back of my stitch lines, okay? I got two dots here that I've poked with my scratch all, as well as a series of dots that make a curved line here for the trigger guard and for the bottom of the muzzle here. Um, I only trace out the holes um, for my um, belt loops. Um, I basically punch those with a hole punch and then connect the the corners here. Um, I may do that off camera. We'll see how long this this ends up. Um, I've also got my stiffener uh, traced out. Now this would go directly right here if this were a, a normal holster um, as a reinforcement panel with just regular old nine ounce leather. However, we are going to cut this out and I'll show you what we're going to do with this to create the inlay uh, the inlay skirt so um i'm gonna go ahead probably try to figure out how to fast forward this um, when i get to the editing part of it and we will go ahead and get this cut out Show you what to do with your reinforcement panel to make it into a skirt for your um, inlay piece now whatever you're inlaying should be the exact same size as this without the step that I'm about to show you so basically what we're doing is creating a skirt that we can stitch around um, and that we can go ahead and use to stitch down and cover up any bad looking edges um, if it's something that's a little bit smaller like let's say um, thinness wise like some snake skin maybe even some lizard I've seen some frog some stingray that kind of doesn't have a really really pretty edge um, you're gonna want to make it smaller than this and when we set our double stitch line you want to be able to catch the edge of it with your first inside stitch but with the outside stitch you don't want to be able to catch that so that way the this leather pulls to the other leather and creates a, a seam that's that's unnoticeable um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. What you need is a pair of wing dividers, um, and we will basically open these up just wide enough to get two sets of stitches. If, uh, let me get a ruler here. I've done this so many times, I just kind of know by looking at it, but it's just shy of uh, a half an inch. What we'll do is we'll take those wing dividers, set them to the inside, and then we'll create a line to go by. And it's easier for you to outline this later on down the road with pen or pencil. By all means, you can do that. 
This is just the way I do it. Not saying this is the correct way or the most efficient way. And I hope you guys can see that on video. I try to make it a little bit darker than I normally would make it. And then you go ahead and proceed to cut that out. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fast forward through this part. I did struggle a little bit here uh, because I was using my razor knife rather than X-Acto knife. Um, there's really tight corners in here. So if you do have issues, just switch your knives to an X-Acto knife and you should be good to go. Now, the inside portion, you're basically making a frame, kind of a picture frame type deal. The inside portion is where your, uh, where your exotic leather or your inlay is gonna go. This is gonna be on the outside. So what we do from here, so we grab our stitch groover. You want to be really careful with this because you're going to have to put your stitches pretty close together. So I test it from one side, see where my outside stitch is going to go. And then my inside stitch, I kind of scribe a very faint line in there so I can see. And that looks about right to me. And you can do this if, for instance, with the gator, I'm gonna have it the exact same size as a stiffener. You can do one, one stitch line. I think it looks better with two. This particular customer had requested two. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. And I could move these out just a hair more, but I think this is gonna be good. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put in our stitch screws. and then the inside. I actually think I'm gonna pull this inside one in just a hair. I just felt like the, the stitches were a little too close together there so I went ahead and pulled it in a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it gives that double stitched look. Now from here, I'm gonna grab our uh, I believe this is a number two edge beveler. Yeah. Number two, we go around only the top part, okay? the Because this is going to sit flat against another piece of leather, like so, um, we only want to do the top because we don't want it to curve up underneath right here where it meets the other piece of leather. So only the top. And we're gonna go ahead and bevel that edge all the way around. And on the on this portion, we can go ahead and leave it because it's gonna get beveled when we do the top. Everybody always asks why I do my stuff in pins because once you pins are easier for me um, and once you bevel the edges down um, you can't see it anyhow so as long as you're not using pin to do a line on the inside of the project that's not going to get cut you should never have a problem 
anything on the inside of the project that's not going to get cut that's just a guideline you should do very lightly with a scratch all or with a pencil that way it could be erased or you can do it with a pen if you're using dark enough dye and you're going to dye over it all right so both of those are beveled um, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out a piece of gator that'll fit underneath this and uh, we'll go ahead and get these finished up get the belt loops cut get our stitches stitch grooves into these and uh, we'll get all this dyed up these three pieces of leather are going to be dyed the exact same color the gator will be some contrast and we'll go ahead and get it stitched up all right guys we're ready to get started with our next step of our uh, alligator inlay holster i've took the liberty of going ahead and punching out the belt holes. Um, I don't feel like that's something that, that really has anything to do with this particular video. I wanted to shorten it up so so that way the video didn't get too, too long. So I went ahead and did that as well as went ahead and put in my stitch lines for the body of my holster. Um, the last section of this video, I actually did the stitch lines for the skirt itself. So we're gonna go ahead and get that dyed up and then you guys stay tuned now we're getting into kind of the juicier part of the video. Um, we're gonna cut out some alligator and we're gonna inlay it uh, up underneath that skirt. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. That's what the whole video is about, so stay tuned. We're gonna go ahead and get this dyed up though. And uh, today we're gonna be using uh, Five Inks Pro Dye. Um, and it's golden brown is the is the color that we're gonna use. This is gonna give it a light, a lighter color. Um, and then it's gonna contrast really well with the with the darker colored. Uh, alligator and then we're also going to do a dark contrasting edge around the outside of the main body as well as the uh, the stiffener okay so we're gonna go ahead and get that dyed up I usually just use a wool dauber there's a thousand different ways to dye and a thousand different ways to do this um, this is just how I do it and I'll show you guys what we're gonna do so first we're gonna all right, so I love this fast forward feature. Uh, it really helps me keep the video short. You'll see me dye in the skirt here. Um, you'll see me dye the front, back, and inside and outside edges. Um, and then I'm going to move on to the main body of the holster. I did two coats on the skirt originally, um, and then I went back and did a third coat. You'll see that at the end of this clip. Uh, the reason for that is because I didn't get my main body looking like I wanted it with just two coats. I had to add a third coat. It was still kind of blotchy after two. Uh, you see here I'm doing the front and this is coat number two. Go over to the back and do three coats on that as well. Um, this will be the third coat I'm applying here. Uh, I do want to note that it is important when you're cutting out pieces of a holster out of the same piece of leather that you cut them out very close together. That's gonna keep your, your leather similar. The grain structure in that leather will be different from one end of the, the panel of leather to the other. So if you don't cut them out in the same exact portion, they will come out different colors and it'll be hard to get them to match. So here I'm coming back, putting the third coat on the stiffener and you'll see me in a second test out the piece of alligator that I have cut out to go up underneath that skirt and you'll get kind of a preview of what what this is going to look like when it's finished. Okay guys, so I just rewatched um, the clip that I just did of me gluing up um, and I did get a phone call in the middle of it so that did screw that up. Um, I wanted to show you guys the cement that I use um, as barge cement. Uh, that's my go-to for pretty much every leather product. Um, and where the video cut off, all I did was I applied glue to the, to the bottom side of this outside skirt panel. And all we're going to do now is just very carefully place this. Now, once you place this, a lot of times this cement is very unforgiving. So once you place it, that's where it's going to go. So be careful to you can sometimes move it just a little bit but be careful to make sure you line up your your outside edges because that's going to give you a good looking edge and you can move it a little bit 
um, sometimes, but most of the time, when you stick it, it's stuck. So um, try to be careful with it. And what I do is once I get it all lined up, I take one of the old Tandy mallets. This is about only thing I ever use this thing for. And I just tap, tap down, make sure my glue set nice and that's it guys we're ready to stitch we'll let this dry let the glue set and we'll go ahead and get it stitched up okay guys um <clears throat> we uh we're ready to go ahead and punch our holes our glue is dry so what we're gonna do is uh put a piece of leather down and we're gonna go ahead and punch the holes on the inside line okay not the outside stitch the inside stitch the outside stitch is what's going to stitch this piece to the actual front panel of the holster. So I'm going to probably fast forward through this. I'm going to do a couple here slow so you can see it. And then I'll probably uh, fast forward the rest when we get to editing just so that way it doesn't take up too much time. And I'm using these uh, chisel punches from Tandy. Uh, they are craft tool and they're two millimeter. All right, guys, all our holes are punched. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start saddle stitching this. Um, I'm just gonna do a few stitches and then I'll probably do the rest off camera just to show you guys the process. But um, I have a video on saddle stitching if anybody would like to check it out. Let me grab a clamp real quick just so clamp that down there. That way my stitching horse isn't moving all over the place. So we're through one hole. Um, regular old saddle stitch. Two needles, one thread. Through the back side with the other needle. Pull it tight. And pull our stitch. Once again, through the front side of the project. Through the back side of the project with the opposite needle. Pull our stitch tight. Now guys, keep in mind, um, I know that this is, we're using gator on this inlay, but there are some inlays that are a little bit less uh, forgiving when it comes to stitching. So if it's a, if it's a thin leather and it's feels brittle it probably is don't pull your stitches too hard or you will pull your thread through on your next stitch line you won't have to worry because that piece will be sandwiched in between but this that whatever you're inlaying is acting as the back so um, you definitely want to uh, be careful I'm not too worried with this because this stuff's pretty tough all right I'll do a few more, probably fast forward through a few more, and then I'll take it off the bench and finish it elsewhere. All right, guys, so our uh, stitching is done on the reinforcement panel. We went ahead and burnished the edges on that. Um, like I said, I did that off camera. If you guys want to see 
how we do that, uh, go check out our edge burnishing video. Um, I've got the basic shape inside inside this. Um, you want it to cover up that scribe line. I have it traced, however, um, just because what we're going to do next is we are going to score this all up with our scratch off. And this doesn't have to be perfect. They make like a special tool for this, but I've always used an awl and it's worked well. The only reason for this is it gives our glue something to stick onto. The side, the back side of this is rough. This is not, so we have to uh, we have to apply our glue there. It has to be able to stick. If it's if it's that smooth surface, it will stick, but it's a little bit less adhesive, should I say? So we're going to apply glue all inside these lines here that we've scribed. Just a thin, even coat. You'll apply it to the back side of your stiffener and then, uh, and then we'll go ahead and stick them. I'm going to do all that off camera. Uh, just to save on some time and when we come back we'll be stitching up uh, the stiffener all right guys so we're glued up I'm um, ready to stitch up this this reinforcement panel to our main uh, front panel of our leather here uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that uh, probably fast forward through this as well just so it kills a little bit of time And just be careful when you're doing this because these stitches are close together. You don't want to you don't want to screw anything up. You've worked hard to get to this point, so just take your time. Be careful. All right, guys, so I went ahead and stitched the stiffener to the front portion of the holster uh, off of video. Um, I don't feel like you guys need to watch that. You already watched me stitch once this video, and I do have a stitching video um, showing you how to saddle stitch. So I will go ahead and, and link that at the, uh, at the end of the video as well as in the description. And uh, so you'll get my closing statements here, and then we will show you a picture of the finished product after it's done. But that's how you do an inlay. Um, and the process is pretty simple all right guys so that's it as far as how to do the inlay portion um, i'm gonna cut the video off there i'm not gonna put any other uh how-to stuff on as far as how to uh, attach that to the to the back side and do the wet mold and all that all there is left is so basically we have this this is the front side of our holster we showed you how to do the inlay um, and then you would attach this to the back side like so um, stitch it wet mold it do the wet or do the uh, edges on the on the edge of the the holster once it's finished we have a video on how to wet mold we have a video on how to do edges um, and we have a video on this on how to sta saddle stitch we will go ahead and do all of uh, do all of that off camera um, and I'll post a picture at the very end of this video of how the holster turned out we have videos on how to do all that other stuff we'll link those at the end um, as well as there may be some linked up in the corner um, throughout the video here and we will definitely uh, put them down in the description so if you guys want to go watch those videos definitely take a look otherwise uh, if you have any questions go ahead and and drop them down in the comments and I'll try to get back to them 
uh, as soon as I can. And you guys keep watching. Make sure to like. Make sure to subscribe. And uh, hopefully this helps some people out. All right. Until next video, guys. Y'all take it easy.